um, we looked at the Rayleigh Ritz theorem, which says that if you have a Hermitian symmetric matrix A, then uh, if you order the eigenvalues, so the Hermitian symmetric matrix has all real valued eigenvalues, so you can order them in increasing order. And so lambda 1 is the smallest eigenvalue and lambda n is the biggest eigenvalue. Then uh, lambda 1 times x Hermitian x is a lower bound on x Hermitian ax and lambda n times x Hermitian x is an upper bound on x Hermitian ax for any x in c to the n. Furthermore, both the lower bound and upper bound are achievable. That is, there exists an x for which this lower bound is achieved and a different x for which the lower bound is achieved. And that is given by this next two statements here, namely that lambda max, which is equal to lambda n, is the maximum value of x Hermitian ax over x Hermitian x for x not equal to zero, which can also be written in this way. Similarly, lambda one is the minimum of x Hermitian ax over uh, x Hermitian x for all x not equal to zero. So this is a maximization problem and this is a minimization problem and the smallest and largest eigenvalues can be written as solutions to maximize the here a minimization problem and here a maximization problem. Okay, so that is uh, one thing we saw. And then um, we also saw that um, by uh, considering the fact that um, uh, these eigenvalues are in increasing order. If we were to maximize x Hermitian ax over x Hermitian x, subject to x being perpendicular to u1, the eigenvector corresponding to the smallest eigenvalue, then uh, in fact, you, if, suppose you were to minimize x Hermitian ax um, uh, over x Hermitian x, subject to x being non-zero and perpendicular to u1, then the solution to that optimization problem is actually lambda 2, the next largest eigenvalue. And uh, extending this argument, we have that um, the minimum over all non-zero x, such subject to the constraint that x should be perpendicular to the first k minus 1 eigenvectors. That is the k minus 1 eigenvectors corresponding to the smallest k minus 1 eigenvalues of the matrix A of this uh, objective function x Hermitian ax over x Hermitian x that is equal to lambda k for k equal to 2, 3 up to n. And similarly coming down from the largest eigenva uh, eigenvalue, if you solve a maximization problem subject to x being perpendicular to the first uh, un, un minus 1 up to un minus k plus 1, that is the first, that is k, k minus 1, uh, k minus 1 um, eigenvectors corresponding to the top k minus 1 uh, eigenvectors, uh, eigenvalues of the matrix A of the same objective function x Hermitian ax over x Hermitian x. That is going to give you lambda n minus k for k equal to 1, 2 up to n minus 1. So this is, uh, the, this is one kind of crucial result we saw. Another very crucial result, which we will actually use many times going forward, is the Kuran Fisher theorem. And what this says, this is a min max theorem. And what this theorem says is that, uh, again, the set starting point or the setting is that A is a matrix of size n cross n and is a Hermitian symmetric matrix. With eigenvalues lambda 1 less than or equal to lambda 2 less than or equal to up to lambda n and let k be an integer. one less than or equal to k less than or equal to n, then there are two ways of writing lambda k. The first is a min max formulation, the minimum over 
a set of vectors w1 up to w n minus k c to the n the maximum of x not equal to 0 um, x perpendicular to w1 through w n minus k of x hermitian a x over x hermitian x is equal to lambda k. And the next formulation is a max min formulation. The maximum of w1 through wk minus 1 of the minimum x not equal to 0 x perpendicular to w1 through wk minus 1 x hermitian ax cos function is the same is also equal to lambda k okay and we saw the proof of this result and uh, the proof is again like i said the last time what i consider to be a somewhat clever proof um, there is a non-trivial step involved where we we said that uh, setting y1 to yk minus 1 equal to 0 where um, yi uh, is equal is defined to be um, uh, what u hermitian times uh, ui hermitian times uh, x uh, by setting some of these variables equal to zero, you only decrease the cost function, and so that's how it, uh, it you you obtain a lower bound on um, uh, on uh, you obtain that lambda k is a lower bound on uh, on this part here, and then you so you show that this lower bound is indeed achievable, and therefore they are equal. Okay. So this, uh, I mean, I, I as I mentioned the last time, uh, please go over the proof of this theorem very carefully and make sure you understand it thoroughly, because this is the these the ideas in that proof is the ones that are the ones that we are going to use quite frequently in the upcoming uh, results.